We have four main acoustic window for transthoracic echocardiography left parasternal, apical, subcostal, and suprasternal notch. But as we know, wherever and any spot that sound can pass through and get to the interest area, we can use it as an acoustic window. For that reason, we can sometimes use right parasternal, right upper quadrant, and we use liver as an acoustic window, especially when we don't have very good um, IBC and aorta and subcostal, or even sometimes based on the patient uh, and situation, rarely we can uh, scan the patient from the behind, from back. But we are not going to talk about uh, those other acoustic window in this presentation. For parasitic lung access, as we know, the some part of the heart is not covered by the lung that we call cardiac notch. It's almost at the level of the left sternal uh, between the third and fourth intercostal uh, space. That uh, is the best spot uh, for the scanning of the heart in left uh, trans uh, left parasternal. Uh, but when we turn the patient to the left or right, this uh, spot will be changed a little, just keep in your mind. The position for, of the patient for uh, parasternal lung axis left, the classic is left lateral decubitus, almost a 45 degree patient turn to the left, and uh, left arm, we put it high on their head or next to your head. Uh, the reason we want to make expanded intercostal space at that area. Uh, as you know, especially when you work in the hospital, many patients cannot turn uh, or they have some restriction for many reasons, like they had post after uh, angiogram, coronary angiogram, the patient for a few uh, hours cannot turn to the left or right, or for any other reason, sometimes we have to scan the patient as a supine. In those cases, if the uh, patient situation let us, we increase the elevate the head side to 30 to 45 uh, degree that may push the heart a little closer to the chest and even if you notice some patient may become and they are in sitting like wheelchair and it's very hard to uh, take them to the bed or they cannot lay down on the bed so we have to scan the patient in a sitting position or even sometimes standing and you will notice when you're working but the most important uh, the, uh, point is that you know how the relationship of the heart and acoustic window will be in any position even in the classic position maybe uh, we need to turn during the scan turn more to the left lateral completely turn the patient to the left lateral or a little more flat is dependent how we get image and you have to be very flexible the position of the patient and keeping your mind that affect a lot on quality of your image and finding a good windows uh, the technique for scanning here is a two way is left hand or right hand in uh, right hand the tech sit behind the patient and start scanning with the right hand and with the elbow and uh, other hand they can we can change the position of the patient very easily and most of the time uh, it used in the europe uh, europe country because as the matter of the HIPAA uh, in the United States they don't usually do in right hand but that's fine it is not against the law and the common technique for scanning of the uh, heart in transthoracic is left hand that we sit in on the left in front of the patient and we scan with the left hand I want to emphasize one important thing as a uh, as a tech if you are working as a tech eight hours uh, five days a week always try get a comfortable position and ergonomic chair that help you and your shoulder neck and 
your back is in the neutral position. As we know, personal lung access uh, in uh, personal lung access view or plaques view is a cross section of the right uh, cross section of the heart in lung access, lung access of the cross section of the heart. As you see here in this uh, chem uh, real uh, photo of the heart that we cut in lung access in plaques view, the sound wave, uh, the plate of the sound wave, pass through the lung axis of the heart, one side from the middle of the aorta and another side, middle of the left ventricular through the apex. And our uh, probe direction is the marker toward the almost between 10 and 11 or pointing to the right shoulder of the patient and our probe is perpendicular to the chest somewhere between third and fourth intercostal at the left side of the sternum. We start with that spot but as a good technique is finding a best windows for uh, plaques view is searching a circular uh, clockwise or counterclockwise doesn't matter and we this maneuver when we found the spot that has the best penetration of the sound to the heart and less the noise and the best quality of image then from that point we maneuver heel toe rotation fanning all those maneuvers uh, with the probe that i talked in another presentation we fix our image as you notice here the photo of cross section of the heart in long axis it looks like a little different with the ultrasonic image of lung axis of the heart in the plaques. Why this is too much differences? The answer is very easy. As we know, the photo, in photo, we create image not only from two dimension, we get through uh, some light from Z axis too. In other words, camera, create image in the depth dimension or z axis but ultrasound only create from cutting surface not the depth uh, dimension or z axis in this photo the camera create image on the wall of the aorta too or here aortic valves inside of the rvot some trabeculation left ventricular wall of the left ventricular internal wall of the left ventricular or popular muscle that is not at the level of the cross section or left atrium wall inside and so on and left uh, that is mitral valve leaflet so that is the reason ultrasound only create from cutting surface cutting surface not the depth or z axis of the cross section that is the reason it looks like a little different, but in reality is the same, only ultrasound doesn't get create image because the sound doesn't pass through to those area, only this area sound pass and create image from this cutting surface. The structure, as you see here, we will uh, notice in the plaques view is RVOT, free wall of the right ventricular, RVOT, free wall of the right ventricular this maybe you don't see very clear because of not optimized very well this image and we have near field artifact then we have ivs interventricular septum anterior wall of the aorta anterior wall of the aorta two cusp of aorta anterior and posterior later we talk which one is that each of them then posterior wall anterior mitral valve leaflet, posterior mitral valve leaflet, some uh, corda tendine here, we'll see hyperechoic uh, line, left atrium, and thoracic aorta, descending thoracic aorta here. And here a hyperechoic line, very uh, hyperechoic uh, reflective uh, tick here, this is pericardium. The first image uh, we get in the parasternal lung axis is far field plaques and the purpose of this view is uh, evaluation for any fluid around the heart. Is that any fluid? We know there is two process can happen 
in the thorax around the heart one is pericardial effusion and another is pleural effusion the best uh, criteria for differentiation between these two fluid from each other is relation of them uh, with the thoracic aorta descending if the end of the uh, fluid packet is anterior to the aorta like this it will be pericardial effusion p if end of the fluid packet is at the level of aorta and beyond posterior to the aorta it will be pleural effusion as you see in this clips uh, we have here a large packet of the fluid here posterior the posterior to the posterior of the heart and we will see some echogenicity inside of this fluid packet that can be any any uh, like tissue like the collapsed lung or uh, other material like the pus blood clot depending on the what pathology create this fluid this packet and posterior to the aorta so this will be pleural effusion even if we look at more accurate to the atrioventricular junction here you will see a wedge shape during the systole a wedge shape hypo hypo echo or on echo structure here that it gives us this fluid is uh, pericardial effusion and the top one is parietal uh, pericardium and the posterior one is this uh, is the uh, visceral and the posterior one is parietal uh, pericardium layer the, in this another clips as you see we have both fluid that this one is anterior to the aorta so this will be pericardial effusion and the, the other one is pleural effusion after we roll out any fluid around the heart the, uh, the image is a pl classic plaques view as you know a good plaques view should have these features first of all the distance of the uh, probe to the interventricular septum and anterior wall of the aorta should be almost equal if it's not equal just with heel toe we can fix this problem second aortic valve should be almost roughly at the center of the image if it's not just we slide the probe toward the shoulder or toward the aorta it means uh, slide the probe to the midline toward the shoulder and in the long axis at the direction of the long axis of the footprint a little automatically this uh, aortic valve come closer to the center but if the aortic, uh, aortic valve here at the left of the more left of the uh, image just be uh, slide our probe to, uh, toward the uh, apex of the heart down another criteria for a good and correct plaques is that the left ventricular the proximal one third of the left ventricular should be rectangle on diastole as you see here this part of the left ventricular during diastole is almost rectangle in other words this part of the ivs and posterior wall is parallel to each other during diastole it shows us that our plaques uh, axis on the plaques is completely passed through the center of the left ventricular this uh, line this okay, that is is the same for apical three chamber view two and another one is that the LVID, left ventricular internal diameter during diastole, is the largest one. For getting the largest one, our plane of the sound should pass through exactly at the center of the left ventricular on the plaques. If our sector passes through this slide, any above this, uh, this slide or below this slide, you will notice the LVID will be shorter and so we are underestimating our image so when we are scanning 
just we needed a slide or fan uh, to the probe to the mid and lateral medial or lateral and see which one is which spot give us the largest diameter when during real time we scan the patient that spot will be correct for our access in the plaques another uh, factor that uh, it give us we are in the correct plaques view is that left ventricular at the end of the left side to the, toward the apex will not closed will not be closed if the uterus is done it closed uh, most probably if the patient is has very hyperkinetic left ventricular the ejection fraction is very high almost over 70 or most of the time we are off the axis and the reason for being off the axis we twisting our probe is twisting less than should be or more than should be we are twisting probe uh, clockwise too much or contact clockwise too much if we how we know which way we uh, twist our probe that it close the uh, apex of the heart if and here RVOT little bit we see RVOT open more and we see a little of the pulmonary valve and pulmonary artery we are twisting too much close uh, clockwise if opposite way we will see tricuspid valve more and we don't see very clear left atrium uh, left uh, uh, left atrium very well so we are twisting less just with that matter we can keep it uh, our left ventricular open if we slide too much medial the tricuspid some uh, uh, some part of the tricuspid leaflet show up here so it give us give this idea that we are too much to the midline we just slide more lateral or fan more lateral to the left of patient if we are fanning or sliding too much too much to the left of patient our RV, lvot will be start closing and we don't see lvot anymore so we know we are closing we are fanning too much to the left of the patient and uh, another one that is a criteria that it show us we are in the right image we have correct plaques view is that cooptation of the aortic cusp is at the center in other words we have uh, concentric cooptation or closing aortic cusp the line that they do to uh, cusp uh, contact each other is at the center of the aorta if you look at here in this uh, real uh, image of the aortic valve on plaques our uh, plain sound ultrasound wave pass through this uh, yellow line yellow by uh, a head arrowhead this is a uh, right coronary cusp this is left coronary cusp and this one is non-coronary cusp our sound wave plate pass through the center of the non right coronary cusp and between these two left and non-coronary cusp the commissure of the left and non-coronary cusp for with this explanation we know this anterior cusp is right coronary cusp and the posterior dependent of the heart activity or our hand angling a little left or right it the posterior one can be left coronary cusp or non-coronary cusp just keep in your mind if we, uh, if our uh, cooptation is not at the center of the aorta in other words cooptation is eccentric uh, this line you will see a little closer to the anterior or closer to posterior we call it eccentric cooptation if it's eccentric it can be for two reasons first we are off the axis in this uh, red arrow if we are a little angling too much to the left of patient we are cutting the heart our ultrasound plate 
pass through these two and they are very close. So closing and uh, contacting these two cusp is close to the anterior wall. So if we are finding too much to, to the left of patient here, so we were getting posterior coaptation. So we have eccentric to the posterior. With this, uh, one of the reasons that is eccentric uh, coaptation is we are off the axis. Another reason that it can be of eccentric coaptation is when the patient has uh, bicuspid aortic uh, valve. That I'm going to talk about this in another presentation separately in detail. Another important uh, issue that I, want to, I would like to mention in this Plax view is the uh, name of this wall. We call it IVS and usually we don't call it septum. Even this is septum, uh, interventricular septum. But we don't call it interventricular, uh, we don't call it septum alone in the Plax view. Why? As you see in the cross section of the heart in this uh, short axis, this part of the left ventricular muscle of myocardium here is IVS or interventricular septum. That is common between the right ventricular and left ventricular, interventricular septum. This wall is divided almost two parts, this light, anteroseptal, anterior part and posterior part. The anterior part we called it anteroseptal wall, and to the posterior we called posteroseptal wall. As you know, the blood supply for each this segment is completely different. Anteroseptal supply by LAD, left anterior descending coronary artery, but posteroseptal is supplied by two or three different coronary branches and involved motion and evaluation for uh, all uh, ischemic heart disease. So the differentiation between these two walls is very important. That is the reason on the plaques, as you notice here, our plane pass through anteroseptal and posterior wall. Sometimes we call it inferolateral wall or posterior wall, this part, this posterior or inferolateral wall. And to the septum here, we call it IVS or more accurate anteroseptal wall. In apical 4, our plane passed through to this line. So to the uh, anterolateral and posteroseptal wall. That is the, and in most people, when they call the septum, they mean in apical 4. Apical four view, uh, apical four chamber view, and the septal will be posteroseptal wall. Just keep in your mind these little differences. Sometimes, uh, if we angle too much to the left of patient, maybe posterior on the posterior posterior of the left atrium, we will see a duct one or two go join to the left atrium that they eat. Uh, or they can be a pulmonary vein, uh, one of them or both of them, left, upper, and lower pulmonary vein. Then it's not pathology. Don't confuse it uh, with the pathology. In some patient, maybe we will see between the, here at the junction of the aorta, posterior wall, and LA, some circular structure, onico circular structure at this area, uh, that will be uh, right pulmonary artery and is not pathology too. Another structure that sometimes we maybe see in the plaques is coronary sinus. Coronary sinus uh, pass run uh, in the interventricular groove here. The junction of the atrium and ventricular, this part, we call it grew, and coronary sinus pass through all around the base of the heart and join to the uh, an entrance and drain to the right atrium. In some patients, this coronary sinus is prominent. Generally, when you see a coronary sinus prominent, uh, measure it. If is the diameter of 
the coronavirus is more than five millimeter, you have to think about some anom uh, venous anomaly that at top of it is persistent left uh, superior vena cava. For example, on this patient, the coronary sinus is very dilated and almost bigger than left uh, thoracic uh, aorta, descending thoracic aorta. Coronary sinus can be detected in different view too. One of them is in their RVIT view or tricuspid on the plaques. Here we have tricuspid valve. This is a septal a posterior uh, leaflet and this is anterior uh, leaflet of tricuspid. Posterior to the posterior leaflet, here a wedge shape during heart activity. You can see even a duct wedge shape here and even duct. This is orifice of the or entrance of the coronary sinus to the uh, right atrium and posterior to that we see a line thin uh, hyperechoic line this is Epstein or Epstein valve belong to the IVC sometimes you will see in some patient and this is IVC inferior vena cava and here we will see SVC superior vena cava in apical Two chamber we can see uh, coronary sinus two at the atrioventricular junction again here in apical four chamber basal view when we have apical four if we find the probe toward the bed we can start seeing uh, basal view apical four chamber basal view that it show us this uh, coronary sinus uh, vein here as a duct and opening to the uh, right atrium or even maybe we can see in subcostal four chamber view too and about this kind of anomaly uh, I am going to talk in the part two of bubble test study in detail after we get in good plaques we go for doing a mode at three spot left ventricular mitral valve and aorta the most <laughs> I'm sorry. The most important uh, factor that we do uh, emote on left ventricular correctly is that our cursor be perpendicular to the left ventricular axis, long axis of left ventricular. Our cursor should be perpendicular. For example, on this right side, as you notice, this cursor is not perpendicular to the left ventricular axis. As I said, the third part of the proximal part of the left ventricular, IVS and posterior wall, are parallel to each other. And this part of the both wall are exactly parallel to the left ventricular uh, long axis. So our cursor should be perpendicular to, to those wall. If not, we never do M mode on left ventricular and we never measure because we are overestimating all those image, uh, parameters. For fixing that problem, we have two options with heel toe and sliding, or we just uh, change the direction and location of the cursor and make it almost perpendicular to these two wall. Then we can do for measure rely on our mode and measurement the spot that we use and put cursor in any spot uh, from the tip of the mitral valve leaflet to the papillary muscle because this part is rectangle and any spot we put cursor will be correct for measuring we measure on two time in the ostolic and systolic put for uh, measuring the wall thickness we have to put cursor over the endocardium and over the endocardium on the endocardium on the endocardium not beyond that not inner just exactly over endocardium and as you see two hyperechoic line the right ventricular side of endocardium this is ivs and this is posterior endocardium or left ventricular side of the IVS endocardium. 
And for posterior wall, just remember uh, we don't include corda tendini or papillary muscle. As you notice in this 2D image, anterior to the posterior wall, we have a hypericol line that is a corda tendini that on M mode we can see as a hypericol line separate from posterior wall. You see here hypoecho between these two parts. So we know this is uh, corda tendini, we don't include that one and this one and just we measure real uh, myocardium uh, thickness. Then we go to at the maximum systolic thickness of the two wall and the LVID at the systole. In this case, uh, our machine will calculate ejection fraction based on title and technique and almost if we do correctly this way, that measurement will be almost close to the our measurement in Simpson for apical 4 and apical 2 chamber. After left ventricular M mode, we do uh, M mode on the mitral valve. We put our cursor at the tip of the uh, boat leaflet. The way that our cursor direction should be almost parallel to the direction movement of the anterior mitral valve leaflet. If it's not, our measurement again will not be very accurate. The only measurement we use for mitral valve leaflet is EPSS, E point septal separation. That is the, we have a, a mode of the mitral valve. We have two main waves, one the beginning, we call E or early uh, feeling or early diastolic, and then a wave or atrial contraction or active feeling uh, and then we all only measure this distance between the top of the E to the septum this is spot so this will be EPSS after mitral valve M mode we go for aortic valve M mode for aortic valve M mode our cursor should be perpendicular to the both anterior and posterior wall of the aorta and should pass through the sinus wall solve of aorta and can catch the co-optation of aortic valve. We will get such a uh, diagram of the M mode. This hyperecho line is co-optation of the uh, aortic cusps and represent the ostal and here start systolic and they open and they get separate from each other this one anterior and posterior one we have two uh, three parameter for measurement in aortic uh, on aortic valve m mode the first is aortic root diameter aortic diameter for that matter we just before opening we put cursor the leading edge to the leading edge or outer to inner outer to inner then we go measure the, how much those caps separate and uh, separate from each other and uh, valve open at that spot from here to here we call acs or aortic cost separation and the last one is la minor dimension or axis for that matter we go at the end of the systole here or largest diameter at this area that belong to the left atrium leading edge to leading edge or outer to inner we don't include the thickness of posterior wall of the aorta just we put here to endocardium here as you notice our cursor for correct measurement in for both side uh, aorta and left atrium should be perpendicular to not only to the aortic uh, walls should be perpendicular to both walls of the left atrium anterior and posterior you notice here this is perpendicular to the aorta but not perpendicular to the left atrium here and the correct way should be perpendicular this way but if you notice this amount are almost is the same as this one almost the same so we can rely on that measurement but if too much of access we don't measure the third dimension that is LA if for any reason 
we cannot get good uh, a mode on the left ventricular we have to do uh, measurement in 2d for 2d measurement we do in two different time endiastolic and systolic and systolic for endiastolic we go and uh, sine loop and at the level of the q or, or r wherever that has clear and give a clear endocardium at two walls and has largest lvid then our measurement should be perpendicular the line of the measurement should be perpendicular to the ivs posterior wall and left ventricular axis the way we measure it and again we don't uh, include the papillary muscle or corda tendini we have to make sure uh, we are not including them uh, them if you are not sure just see a loop and go back and forth and find the correct and the right endocardium line and then go that spot and then measure it Another measurement that visually we don't do only in cases we have pulmonary hypertension or right side problem. Uh, we measure it RVOT diameter. This RVOT diameter, uh, we measure it if our has good uh, and correct plaques view. We measure inner of the right uh, ventricular free wall at the level of the perpendicular to the uh, orthotic uh, wall junction to the left ventricular at this spot so the best and correct way of measuring for rvot diameter is from here to here and this one is not uh, correct a little overestimating but since our dimension measurement is in one line just you have to keep if we cannot get it exactly the same line make sure do you do you measuring is the almost equal to this distance and then we do for the at the systole at the systole we don't need measure uh, thickness of the wall we just measure lvid at the systole time again our measurement should be perpendicular to the left ventricular and exactly the same spot that we measure uh, LVID at the ostal. Exactly, we have to do the same spot at the systole time. And don't again include corda tendini or papillary muscle in our measurement. In that case, our measurement ejection fraction by uh, Tycho uh, technique will be almost close to the Simpson uh, technique. After that, we go. Uh, measuring the most important parameter in echocardiogram and this is that is LVOT diameter LVOT diameter uh, is any spot for measuring we can use any spot from aortic valve hinge to 5 millimeter toward the left ventricular from the root of the aortic root to 5 millimeter to the side of the left ventricular here to here any spot from here we can measure here 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 should be the same because that spot almost almost is a rectangle too and for many other reasons as i talked in uh, aortic stenosis uh, the best uh, spot is three millimeter close to the aortic root our measurement should be done at mid systolic or the time that give us the maximum diameter highest diameter that will be uh, take as a lvot diameter the measurement should be inner to inner this image is a little wrong this has been measured outer to inner so we measure inner to inner and we have to try uh, especially when we have sten aortic valve stenosis calcification here we have to do this measurement different two or three times in different angle a little off axis slide or move your probe a little higher or lower intercostal and find see which one is give you the best and highest diameter then uh, take that one as a lvot diameter and uh, delete the other measurements after LVO diameter, we go for aortic root diameter. Aortic root diameter, usually when they talk, is the aortic root uh, 
the armature at coronary sinus of Valsalva. As you know, sinus of Valsalva is the area of aortic root that uh, coronary artery uh, orifice are at that spot and usually is the largest diameter at the aortic root. Uh, we measure at the end of the diastole when it's closed, uh, aortic uh, valve is closed and we measure outer to inner or leading edge to uh, leading edge, outer to inner. As you know, actually aortic root has four diameter, not one diameter. Aortic root is a part of the aorta, the beginning of the aorta that contain aortic valve. As you see here, this green, this is aortic root from the beginning to the above uh, the coronary sinus and uh, connect uh, end of the aortic cusp here. Aortic root has four dimensions. One of them is pseudotubular junction. The connection of the aortic root to the ascending aorta, this spot, that is the smallest or narrowest of the aortic uh, root diameter. Again, we measure at the ostal, leading edge or outer to inner, outer to inner at the ostal. This measurement has been not correct done in the right moment. Then another one is the same as uh, aortic root we talked in the previous uh, uh, slide and we measure largest one outer to inner. Again, this one is not right. Outer to inner. This is aortic root diameter. Then we go measure two other diameter. This two other diameter, we call it annulus diameter. That a little difference. As we know, the lower part of the aortic cusp that connect to the aortic wall, we call it hinge. This is spot, hinge, hinge of aortic valve. The lowest part that connected to the aortic wall. If we measure aortic side of the hinge to hinge, inner to inner, we are measuring surgical annulus diameter. So, aortic side of the hinge to hinge is surgical aortic annulus diameter. If we measure vertical side of the hinge, hinge to hinge, inner to inner, we are measuring echocardiographic aortic annulus diameter. For memorizing those uh, important parameters, we can uh, take it as a phone number memorized as a phone number there is male and female our measurement uh, for each of those parameters should be less than these numbers 11 is when for memorizing bedded you can memorize as uh, the uh, a number we have to call for uh, out of the united states we have you have to first take this uh, 11 so for both of the men and female is the same for uh, and it should be uh, IVS diameter and posterior diameter. Both of them at both gender should be less than 11 millimeter. For the left ventricular and diastolic diameter for men should be less than 60 millimeter for female should be less than 54 millimeter. Aortic dimension in any spot shouldn't be more than 30, uh, uh, 38 millimeter. Some places they take it as uh, 40 millimeter. It's dependent of the which center and which doctor you you work with that. But the, as a standard is 38. If it's over 38 millimeter aortic root, it will be abnormal and dilated. Uh, the other number is 40 for left atrial uh, axis in the plaques, short axis of the left, should be less than 40 millimeter. And the last number is 60 for both gender is the same. This 60 is for long axis of the left atrium in the apical for, and the same 60 is for left atrial volume, 60 milliliter. So in this way, you can memorize these numbers very easy. 
there are two most important uh, parameters that uh, we have to remember and be used based on body surface area. As you know, many of those measurements depend on body surface area. Those two important parameters is one of them is left atrial volume index and another is left ventricular volume index. The normal left ventricle, left atrial volume index should be less than 34 milliliter per cubic meter and for uh, left uh, ventricular volume is 75 milliliter per cubic meter. Those numbers usually we use based on body surface area. We have to uh, calculate it or when we put the height and weight of patient, the machine calculates us uh, on the report. After we're done with the measurement in 2D and M mode, we go for the color on the uh, mitral and aortic valve. First, we start with uh, mitral valve. Again, I am emphasizing here for catching any abnormal blood flow in any valve, we always should survey and sweep and scan all the way surface of the valve. So when you are focusing on a mitral valve, you have to fan your probe left and right and a little hill toe until you get it uh, nice image and jet if you can catch it if there is any our color box should be small as possible just cover that area and jet the height of the height of the color box doesn't affect too much on the frame rate but the width of the uh, color box is affect a lot if our uh, width of the color box increased frame rate decreased and sensitivity of the our uh, image will decrease so we just uh, makes the size of the color box that area interest area uh, in the cases that we have uh, any jet is not clear on the color how it function and what is the mechanism of that jet we can use a dual image it help us uh, exactly what is going on and what is the reason for uh, that uh, jet but it's not mandatory after mitral valve we did we go for aortic valve and put color the way that cover some part of the IVS aorta uh, wall aortic valve and part of the uh, mitral valve and should have a little uh, LVOT after uh, finishing with color and the same maneuver we do for checking any uh, abnormal jet and blood flow, we go for the right ventricular inflow tract or uh, tricuspid valve on plaques. For getting this uh, image or view, we just need from plaques, fan or angle tip of the uh, footprint of the probe to the, toward the right of the hip of patient. Sometimes even with a slight a little medial, it can give us RVIT. Depending on the position and body habitus of the patient, you have to be flexible and see which one works for getting good image. Sometimes even if you don't see very clear both anterior and posterior uh, tricuspid valve leaflet, just twist a little counterclockwise or clockwise. Uh, you will notice more clear uh, tricuspid valve very easy. The structure we will see in the RVIT view is part of the right ventricular here. We will see anterior and posterior tricuspid valve leaflet. Here we can see a little of coronary sinus, opening of coronary sinus. A little of the IVC sometimes you see it will be more prominent more obvious and then SVC here and this is right atrium here we have tissue some part of the uh, liver and we don't see any part of the left uh, ventricular after we get in 2D we put color on this valve again and then we follow the same rule, sweeping and scanning all the way off the uh, valve and if 
uh, try to cat, get and catch any abnormal jet at that area. If we have any jet, we put cursor or cursor over that jet. If not, we just put it there at the center of the valve and then we do continuous wave on the tricuspid valve. If there was any jet, then we measure the maximum uh, velocity of the jet. In some center, they maybe they request do pulse wave Doppler on the tricuspid valve too, but it's not uh, mandatory and uh, actually there isn't any guideline for using pulse wave for any evaluation of the obstetric dysfunction of the right ventricular. After RVIT, we do RVOT or right ventricular outflow sac or uh, better we called it pulmonary valve. We have two type of the pulmonary valve, two view for pulmonary valve in plaques. One of them is modify. When is modify means that in the, on the plaques, we just twist slowly or probe clockwise, 10 to 15 degree. And all suddenly left atrium disappear and here our VOT become open completely and we will see pulmonary a valve here and part of the pulmonary artery here. Here we can sometimes with the hot contact or breathing of the patient, it change. But here we have uh, IVS, we have uh, anterior mitral valve leaflet, posterior mitral valve leaflet, some part of left ventricular, and even aortic descending here. Maybe we we'll see or not. This is a cross section of the heart at the. Uh, this RVOT view modify pulmonary valve exactly the same. Those structure we can see it in this uh, real cross section of the heart. Another uh, view that we use for uh, catching the picture uh, image of the pulmonary valve or RVOT on plaques is non modify pulmonary valve view. Non modify. This means without any twisting anything from the plaques, we just fan tip of the probe toward the left shoulder of patient. If with this maneuver we don't get it pulmonary valve, just slide a little, slide little millimeter to the midline uh, uh, along the short axis of the footprint and then angle to the left of the patient. And suddenly we will see RVOT here and pulmonary and pulmonary valve and pulmonary artery. Uh, I call it upside down eggplant uh, because in almost all patients in non-modified pulmonary valve, it looks like this. We don't see any other structure here. Just we see part of the RVOT, pulmonary artery, pulmonary artery and pulmonary valve here. In any of those that we got uh, for pulmonary valve, we put color on the here we have the schematic of the uh, image that we get in non-modified pulmonary valve on plaques. We just fanning to the left of the patient and it cut uh, ultrasound plate wave, wave pass through this line. After that, we put color if there is any abnormal jet on uh, the valve. We catch it, record it, and then we put a uh, continuous wave on exactly over that jet. Here you see the jet, the most important character of the uh, PI is that jet start at the level of the closing pulmonary valve. Because at this level, we have sometimes uh, coronary artery pass through this area and it give, give us some uh, positive jet and we make it make make us confused is that jet belong to the pi or no is the blood blood flow from the coronary artery just look at the relationship starting of the jet uh, and uh, pulmonary valve it exactly start at this level so we know that is uh, pulmonary uh, insufficiency jet then we put cursor and if we have clear envelope for PI, then we measure uh, end the 
and pick the arsenic of the jet. After that, we put a uh, pulse wave on the uh, level of the pulmonary valve. And if there is any uh, reason for uh, suspicions of pulmonary hypertension, we measure acceleration time at the beginning and peak of that. And the time between the beginning to the peak will be acceleration time. After finishing plaques, we go for the PSAX or parasternal short axis view. If on the plaques our uh, aortic valve be at the center of the image, just with twisting 80 to 90 degree clockwise from the plaques, we get basal view at the level of the aortic valve view, the PSAX of aortic valve. We will see that during uh, systole open and during diastole closed, and it gives us the Mercedes sign, as you see here. Those uh, cusps, we have three cusps, how we name it them and uh, recognize them, each of them. Our landmark is IV, intraatrial septum, IAS. Intraatrial septum, this is left atrium, this is right atrium, and this septum, hyperecoline, at the center is a little thinner, is intraatrial septum. The one that connected to and is close adjacent to the uh, intraatrial septum it will be non-coronary cusp. So this is non-coronary cusp. This will be right coronary cusp at 12 o'clock almost, and three o'clock or four o'clock will be uh, left coronary cusp. Other structure that we will see at this view, PSAX at the aortic valve, is left atrium descending thoracic artery that goes posterior to the left atrium. And sometimes you will see left atrium auricle or appendage, as you see here in the, this cross section of the heart, this, uh, this uh, reverse L shape, as you see here, this one is. Uh, left uh, atrial auricle or appendage. Sometimes maybe we'll see left lower and upper, upper and lower uh, pulmonary vein here. We see upper, uh, upper here, but I don't see here in the lower. But it's not in, too much important in this image. Then uh, we have here tricuspid and pulmonary valve here. After we, we this, our image is only focusing for pulmon, uh, aortic valve first. So after we find out exactly, show all three cusps, uh, then we put color over the only aortic uh, valve, and we record it, and we try fan up and down and see is there any jet or not. As you notice here, Jet insufficiency happen means during diastole. What does it mean? It means when the those uh, three cusps are closed. So if you look at this, this patient has trivial, very teeny jet at during diastole when closed. Very small, teeny blood flow. You will see here at the center of the cooptation all those three cusps. So we can catch it any jet if there is. After aortic valve, we go for the tricuspid uh, valve. Before I go for tricuspid, I have to mention something. And that is about the aortic valve. When we have any abnormal uh, structure or finding in aortic valve, like calcification, jet, or anything, always we have to zoom in at the aorta. We use uh, zoom in and it's better use dual image for finding exactly what's going on on the valve, if there is any abnormality or not. For tricuspid valve, just from the aortic, we need fan without any twisting angle. We just fan the probe from aorta when we got it, fan to the right of the patient or right hip. In that case, uh, tricuspid valve will be very clear show up. If it doesn't show up, just a slight, slight millimeter, a little down, angle up, or opposite way, slight up, angle down, or 
a little around that area with a searching circular in that spot with finding and angling to the right of hip tricuspid valve and right atrium show up very clearly we have here posterior and anterior uh, anterior and posterior tricuspid uh, valve leaflets then we put it uh, color over the again to the over the valve and if there is any jet as you see here in one moment there is a small jet uh, we put cursor at that spot and do uh, continuous wave and if the, we can catch any jet during systole as you see we measure maximum velocity of that jet after finishing with tricuspid we go for the pulmonary valve from uh, for the pulmonary valve we have to fan uh, toward the left of the patient opposite of the tricuspid from the aorta we fan to the right of the patient to the right hip here for pulmonary we fan to the left of patient toward the left shoulder and try when you start showing up if you want open completely pulmonary artery and even the saddle of the pulmonary this part, spot that is branching uh, divided pulmonary artery to the right pulmonary artery and left pulmonary artery just twist a little uh, more clockwise uh, or suddenly you will see those two branches of pulmonary artery when you saw very well the pulmonary artery then we put color on that with pulmonary you can see here we have very nice uh, feeling of the pulmonary valve and pulmonary aorta and even right and left uh, pulmonary artery branches if there is any again any uh, abnormal blood flow pi we just put uh, continuous again at that spot and we do continuous way sometimes if you need it uh, show more for any reason for example there are suspicious pulmonary uh, embolism uh, in the main or uh, main branches we can get a little fan a little angle more up and twisting more or less we can show more deep on those branches uh, le uh, left left pulmonary and right pulmonary uh, more distal and find those spots in those cases that the patient has a symptom and sign of pulmonary hypertension or we will find during our study we will find uh, that RVOT and pulmonary artery looks a little enlarged in those cases we have to measure three at least three diameter one RVOT one and the second one RVOT two and finally pulmonary artery for uh, RVOT one that is the same we measure RVOT on the plaques we at 12 o'clock we put cursor at 12 o'clock inner at the largest diameter inner to the inner of the uh, aortic uh, wall inner to inner at this spot perpendicular and at 12 o'clock for RVOT2 we measure at the level of pulmonary uh, valve and for pulmonary artery one or two centimeter beyond the pulmonary valve the spot that is very clear has clear border we measure those uh, spots too sometimes even if we have clear uh, branches left and right we even measure those uh, branches diameter too here uh, the measuring uh, the endostolic and peak diastolic of the pi and finally again we do if we didn't do before here we do it pulse way on pulmonary valve and we measure acceleration time after finishing uh, pulmonary valve we go for the mitral valve level 
for mitral valve level from the aorta of that spot we just need a little slide or angle toward the apex slide or angle a little toward the apex and all suddenly mitral valve starts show up a correct uh, uh, short axis of the mitral valve view is the one uh, left ventricular is completely almost circular and we will see both anterior and posterior mitral valve leaflet and give us, give us an impression of fish mount. We call it fish mount because it looks like that. And if it is not, is not closed completely left ventricular in any spot, it means we are twisting less or more. Just with twisting more or less, it is not uh, closing any spot uh, that is not closed. Sometimes with sliding it help us uh, that make it left ventricular at the level of the basal mitral valve should be completely uh, circular shape. Then we put a uh, color on the mitral valve. As you see, we have a little jet at here at this spot during systole. So we catch it that one and show it after uh mitral valve color we go for the popular muscle level again if we, if we, there is uh, the same concept and principle uh, left ventricular should be circular shape if there is any wall motion or normality of course you will see the wall are moving but shape should be uh, circular shape if it's not closed again there are two reasons we are twisting less or more or we are off axis, off axis, and the, our uh, left ventricular at the level of popular muscle is uh, not circular shape. In another reason, it cannot be a circular shape is when pulmonary pressure is very high. In that time, uh, the IVS become flat and give us the D shape uh, during only uh, diastole or systole and diastole. That is different uh, topic we are going to talk about is in pulmonary hypertension. There is one uh, important technique for getting correct uh, PSACs on left ventricular at the level of popularity muscle. We have two techniques, sliding and angling. The correct way when the heart is almost vertic vertical so in the regular people and those are tall and not fat and heart is more uh, vertical is not uh, not horizontal it is more vertical and not bent it. the best technique from the aorta to the apex is that we slide the probe toward the apex for each level in those cases, if we just angle it, we get off axis, off axis image, and it not will be uh, instead of the being circular shape, it become oval shape, and that is the reason uh, we don't get circular shape, and we know uh, we are off the axis view like this. But in those patients on the plaques, you will see that apex, tip of the anterior, tip of the apex is too much anterior to the wall and heart is almost horizontal in those cases we, you can use it just with fanning not sliding with fanning you can get it good image at those three level of the left ventricular okay uh, the next one is for uh, the last one for the PSAX is apex for apex as you will see here I can say this is off axis of apex and this is correct one why first of all this if you notice this is oval shape second apex if you are in the right axis and we get in correct image apex twist contact clockwise like this but this one just a radial contraction this is off axis this is correct axis because this one has been angling from the base to the apex this one has been slide to the apex and we are right access at this level.
Another one that I like to mention here before I go for the uh, next uh, slide is uh, aortic ascending aorta. Whenever you do uh, doing uh, and getting image plaques and checking on the uh, aorta, always uh, try for yourself go slide toward the aorta and uh, catch the uh, and check uh, ascending aorta make sure there isn't any pathology at the ascending aorta even is not uh, mandatory in our protocol the, in the transthoracic but always do it and you will be surprised many times there is some pathology especially aortic aneurysm at the ascending aorta that in the plaques view standard plaques view we don't record it we have to go a little off axis slide our probe toward the, the midline to the aorta more and maybe twist a little clockwise more and see ascending aorta. Uh, before I finish the plaques and left parasternal view, I want to mention about right parasternal uh, plaques. As I mentioned, right parasternal uh, we can use in some patient uh, for that uh, study. For getting uh, right parasternal, we have to turn the patient to the right side and right arm up. And instead of the putting the cursor perpendicular to the chest, we pointing to the right hip of the patient, left hip, left hip of the patient. So, and we start from second to uh, to uh, third uh, intercostal space next to the uh, sternum and pointing to the left hip of the patient and with maneuver searching circular, we can get it uh, good, uh, most of the time, good ascending aorta, sometimes off axis of the plaques, and most of the time, a uh, uh, four chamber view of the heart uh, from the right parasternal. And if we twist it clockwise, we can get it uh, the base of the heart and uh, left ventricular uh, short axis. Those images, in many cases, it help a lot, especially uh, for ascending aorta and for checking IVS when we don't have good image in subcostal uh, window. I hope you like this lecture, and if you thought this was useful, Please share it.